κάνει. Άρα είμαστε εντάξει. Ναι. Good morning for me as well, and uh, today I'm going to present some preliminary results of an ongoing research project that we're doing in the, in the Hellenic Center for Marine Research, and the title is the preliminary results on the anti-fouling potential of copper wire and dyneema fiber combined lines for aquaculture net cages. <clears throat> in general, the fouling has been an important issue for all industrial applications which involve the submersion of structures and surfaces into marine waters. And fouling is the result of an initial biofilm that is created on the surface of any material submerged in seawater and is formed by marine bacteria. This biofilm serves as nutrition for microscopic benthic fauna and flora initially and gradually becomes the hard substrate for all kinds of micro and macro mobile and immobile marine benthic organisms, such as worms, seaweed, sponges, shellfish, and many others. So the the, this surface actually acts as an artificial reef. Most technology and ad fouling methods originate from the shipping industry and mainly consist of TBT-based coatings with amounts of copper, zinc, and tin. However, scientific findings, findings have shown that these coatings leach heavy metals in the environment and have negative effects on the water, sediment, and can bioaccumulate in aquatic organisms. Hence, they can be transferred along the fishery supply chains to the consumers. Recently, anti-fouling research for aquaculture has been developed uh, along three axes. The first is the use of mechanical interventions. Of course, it's, this is in order to avoid using these coatings, which are which have deleterious effects uh, for the environment and the or, uh, marine organisms. So the first approach is to use mechanical interventions and machinery, like brushes and pressurized water, to remove fouling on site. Uh, the, the disadvantage of this method is that they can harm the surface of the nets and increase uh, the wear of the net itself. So it uh, makes its life cycle shorter. The second is to, to use pure uncoated copper alloys in order to manufacture nets instead of nylon. So we, we change the material that we make the, uh, the nets. The disadvantage is high cost, extremely difficult to handle. And it's very heavy and it needs large space for storage. It's not very easy for all fish farms to, to use this kind of nets. And the third approach is the development of new coatings, which are based on copper nanomaterials, which have the main disadvantage that they dissolve in the water and need continuous recoating much uh, sooner than the case of the TBT-based coating. So actually, uh, the, the, the general consensus in the aquaculture industry is that the uh, TBT-based uh, anti-fouling paints and coatings are the most uh, effective for anti-fouling purposes, but they have these uh, particular environmental effects which everybody would like to, uh, to avoid, uh, if possible. Now, the objectives of this study is to take uh, into consideration all these advantages and disadvantages of the major, the three, these three major uh, approaches for anti-fouling in the aquaculture industry, and we designed, manufactured, and tested a new type of uh, twines uh, in order to make braided, knotless coastal marine fish farm nets using copper wire, the top, uh, typical copper wire, uncoated. It's uh, the very, very, uh, very, very uh, small diameter wire that is used in order to make uh, electrical transformers and Dyneema fiber twines, and which uh, we believe that because of the uh, presence of copper wire will have uh, anti good anti-fouling uh, uh, performance after constant immersion in seawater in the environment of an operating fish farm, meaning that we tested it in actual eutrophic environments, uh, 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 actual operational condition in eutrophic environments. Testing would be based on the, the, 
the results, the analysis of the data would be based on the development of fouling on each of these experimental nets after seven months of constant, constant immersion in seawater. And the performance indicators that we used were the percentage of openings, meaning how the percentage of the unobstructed meshes on the net after this experimental period, and the comparison between the different nets in order to estimate the optimum ratio between how much, how many twines from, uh, how many fibers from, of, uh, of copper wire we need to put in uh, together with Danima fibers in order to have the best results. So the, exper uh, the experimental design is to, to create a series of uh, nets manufactured using Danima fibers and uncoated uh, copper wire with a diameter uh, around 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 millimeters. And we formed the twine, which had a denier value of approximately 210 uh, slash 24, which is a standard dimension for fish nets twines in, uh, in Greece. And uh, the mesh size of the nets, of the eventual nets that we used, which are similar to what I show you in this uh, photograph, you could had the, the, the nets had a, a diameter of 12 meters and a depth of 11 meters. Again, it's something standard in Greece today. And the mesh size was 16 millimeters. Each net exhibited a different configuration as follows. The first was a net without any coating, which you, we used as the control. The second had TBT coating, the, uh, meaning the uh, standard, uh, uh, let's say, environmentally uh, not uh, acceptable coats. Uh, the, the third had the commercial nanomaterial coating, and the, 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 the remaining four had different percentages of copper wire in relation to Danima uh, fibers at 5%, 10%, 20%, and 40%. And the experimental period lasted approximately seven months. Now, the first uh, group of results that we have after the, uh, the se these se seven months have showed, uh, have given us actually three groups of nets. The first, which is the upper, it's almost visible, it's the green one. It's uh, the net which is coated with the TBT uh, copper net, uh, copper paint. So actually, it gave the best performance, leaving more, more than 80% of uh, the meshes of the holes of the net uh, free from clogging, from uh, uh, encrustations and uh, 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 fouling. The second group was the nano-coated net at around 39.6%, the 20% uh, copper wire net at 43.7%, and the 40% co uh, copper wire at 41.5%. And the last group, the worst group actually, was the group of 10% uh, copper, 5% copper, and the control which was the lowest at 15.1, which is the black one, which was more or less something acceptable, expected actually. Now, if we take only the four nets that had uh, the combination of Danima fibers and uh, copper wire and uh, put them in a diagram in relation to the final average uh, openness percentage, uh, we take this uh, uh, diagram, which then we uh, fit it into a quadratic equation, a simple a quadratic equation, which then we maximized with a simplex algorithm and we got, it's a little bit, okay, it's behind my picture, but uh, we got as uh, optimum, as optimum per, uh, ratio between copper wires and uh, Danima fibers uh, at 30%. 30% copper wires and 70% uh, uh, Danima fibers. Uh, I remind you that the, 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 the last net that we used was 40% copper wires and 60% uh, uh, of Danima. So uh, with a 30, this is actually uh, give us also an estimate of the cost benefit uh, uh, performance of uh, what can be, uh, how we can receive the best anti-fouling uh, performance uh, using the minimum amount of copper wires. You can understand it's expensive in order to, uh, to add it. Now, from, from the initial, from the, uh, only from the design of the, uh, uh, of the new net, uh, we managed to gain several advantages. The first is that the new net still retains its norm normal handling characteristics, means that you can store it easily, it can, you can manage it, and can, you can ha the, the workers, the staff of a fish farm can handle it easily, replace it and store it. It's not very heavy, and uh, it has uh, very good characteristics as that. 
because we use Danima and not nylon, which is also a common uh, material that uh, it is uh, used for making uh, fishnets, uh, we have reduced weight, overall weight, in, in relation to a similar nylon net, thinner fibers, and therefore less surface in order to, uh, to be, uh, be covered by fouling, reduced coating amounts required if this is going to be coated eventually, and, and of course resistance to ultraviolet, uh, um, more resistance to ultraviolet uh, um, radiation and abrasion in relation to nylon, which polymerizes very easily with uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation. Okay, of course, yeah, you're better than, than, than before that. And the third is that uh, Danima is stronger material than nylon, and all this combined gives a better, higher rigidity of the net and reduces the capacity of the fish to bite it, because especially when we have a uh, gilt head sea brim species, the Sparus aurata species, it's a poor as we call it here in Greece, uh, it's, uh, it's very common for this uh, fish to bite the nets and create holes from where fish can escape. So uh, it's uh, the Danima, it's stronger material and you can prevent a lot of uh, damages like that. And at the same time, due to higher rigidity, you have less deformation because of the, net, uh, the, the currents and the waves which change the shape of the net and reduces the, uh, the area for the, the volume which is available for the fish, which can be a problem. However, the measured disadvantages that we can point out here is the fact that because we use Danima uh, material and copper wire, so then the, the cost in relation to a similar nylon net is almost 20% higher, which can be something important. And the second is in order to manufacture this twine where you have combination, uh, you, you uh, knit together uh, copper wire and Danima wire, you need special machinery in order to create this twine. So it's, it can be a problem. Uh, only one uh, uh, company, a uh, factory in Greece, has this kind of... Uh, they, they bought it actually because we, we did these experiments with them, with their help, and they bought a new machinery to be able to handle also copper wire. So, the major conclusions. The first part is that uh, the net painted with uh, copper uh, showed the best performance at around 80%. And uh, the middle group uh, gave us about an average of 41.6%, uh, and the worst group gave us around 20%. 0.2 percent of openness after all this uh, all this period of uh, constant immersion into the water. So this, the statistical analysis of the equation, which I showed you, uh, gave us the best, uh, let's say, amount in uh, of uh, the best ratio between copper wire and the Danima fibers in the in the twine in order to get uh, the best results and, of course, uh, optimize the cost of uh, manufacturing uh, of this, uh, this kind of nets. And uh, this, uh, the, the result was around 30% of copper wire and 70% of fibers. Now, this uh, company, because they are working on building nets for uh, fish farming here in Greece and abroad, they, can, they do exports, they are planning also to utilize this kind of uh, technology of combined uh, Danima and uh, uh, copper wire fibers in order to make the nets because they are more uh, rigid and more, uh, also, not only for fish farm, and also for fisheries, for trawlers and stuff like that. So this is my presentation. Thank you very much. And we'll have to present a question.